Welcome back to our show, Marriage on the Rock. Some of my episodes will be related to marriage and some others will be related to parenting. This episode is a little bit strange because I want to ask you if you know what's the difference between tennis ball game and a racket ball game. Hopefully you are seeing them now. The tennis is a very competitive, competitive game. They score and each one is trying to make the other one fall. While in the racket, there is no competition. The idea is to keep the ball going back and forth between the two players, not make it fall in the ground. No scores. And the longer we continue, the better the game, the game and the better the fun. So, let me even compare while you are watching. In tennis, only one wins, while in racket, no one wins, because the winning is for both. In tennis, everybody's watching the scoring on the board, and hoping he is higher or better than the other one and comparing himself with his competitor or her competitor and they want to be better and the other one losing. While in racquetball, no one keeps scores. There are no scores. In tennis, the fun in letting the ball falls on the ground, hitting it like a bag, back play and giving it in a small corner that he or she cannot get it. It's fun in making the ball thrown in a corner that you cannot respond back to me. However, the fun in racket ball and letting the ball always up and never falls. In tennis, the better player or the more clever shows the weakness of the other, exploits the weakness of the other, makes fun of the weakness of the other, makes the other appear wrong, weak, doesn't know how to play. And others will clap hands when you make the other one fall or can't get the, 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 the thrown ball. And racket, on the other hand, the better player the stronger player, the more clever, helps the weaker one and throw at her or at him easier balls until he or she gets more trained or gets the hang of it. In tennis, the faster the ball falling, the joy, the fun, the win, the scores. Like if you do on, on even the, the serve itself and and she cannot respond back, good for you, you scored. But the longer the ball in the air without falling, it's what we call a win-win, while in tennis, win-lose. With that, I would like to begin talking about a topic, is your marriage is a racket ball game or a tennis ball game. I want to read from Matthew 12 a passage that our Lord said. It's about himself. Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. He will not quarrel nor cry out, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoking flax he will not quench, till he sends forth justice to victory, and in his name Gentiles will trust. I have a question. What if you or your wife or your husband, a bad player, a smoking flax, would you quench? Would you quench a smoking flax? 
Is there any hope for the bad player in marriage? Is the bruised reed useful in anything? Is there any hope in a smoking flax? Number one, for you as a bad player, accept yourself. Because God accepts you in spite of your weakness, your failures, your past, your old shortcomings. So why would you not accept yourself? A lot of bad players became good when they admitted and knew that they failed, but they are not a failure. They flunked the tests, but they are not always failing the tests. Because God's eye looks at you and say, you are not a smoking flax that I'm going to quench. There is no way I'm going to quench you. You are a bruised reed, I know, but I will never break. Accept yourself, meaning God works with you, even if you are the weaker vessel of the two, even if you are not as knowledgeable as your other spouse, too. Please do not quench yourself. Sometimes you find an, a candle about to, to be quenched and you start covering the flame because the flame is very little, so you start covering it. And there is another one who breathes or blows in the candle because he or she wants to quench it. Don't quench yourself because does, God does not quench you. Do not exaggerate in expressing your weaknesses. Encourage yourself and say, I'm not that bad. I'm not always bad. I, yeah, I did a few bad things, but I'm not totally a failure. Do not whisper in yourself saying, I do not fit, I will perish. Remember and believe in the miracle. When God united you with your wife or your husband, the Holy Spirit came upon you to unite you into one. Believe in the grace, in the power of the sacrament, in the Holy Spirit inside you both that want to encourage you, change you, make a miracle even to change you to become a better person. As St. Paul says in Romans, For I know that in me, in my flesh, nothing good dwells. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. And he says in 2 Corinthians, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities and in my weaknesses, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. In your own weakness, the grace will work. Believe in the miracle of matrimony. It's a sacrament. There is an invisible power that you can't see that works in you and your wife or your husband to change you, to become better. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Abide in him. Otherwise, where is the juice coming from? Four, do not quit playing, please, I urge you. So many, they keep playing twice and then they say, oh, I'm not, I don't know how to play. The ball is all over the place. I'm quitting. I'm leaving the yard. I'm not playing anymore. Please accept your spouse and do not leave the game. If you are the stronger player, do not quit the game because your spouse is weaker, doesn't know how to play. Do not focus on his defects. If I repeat this 10 times, may not be enough today. Please stop focusing on her defects. Please do not keep giving her back throws and you know that she cannot face them 
because she is weak in the back throws. Give her the easy games. Play rocket. Don't try to score. Don't try to exploit his weaknesses. How good is that for you? Borrow God's eyes, the eyes of Christ who sees the good in each one of us, regardless how bad we are all are. Receive one another just as Christ had received us to the glory of God. 5. Encourage the weak player. Let us say your wife doesn't know how to play. Why are you putting her down? Tell her that's good. You played good. Give her an easy game and say, wow, you did much better today compared to yesterday. This year is far better than last year. This month you are superbly better than last time. With love, cooperation, endurance, you can get the other player to improve. Not with criticism, not with putting down, not with bad throws. Don't exploit the weakness. Encourage even the little steps. Don't quench. Don't quench a smoked flax. Don't break a bruised reed. In First Thessalonians, St. Paul wrote, We exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, Comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. Number six, as I said to the weaker player, trust the miracle of grace to improve you, I tell the stronger player, trust that the grace will work in you to endure the weakness of your spouse. Trust the grace of the Holy Spirit in changing, transforming the weakness of your spouse and to give you patience, you are the stronger vessel. Pray that the grace of God be upon you and you endure the weakness of the other. In 1 Timothy, St. Paul wrote, For this reason I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show all long sufferings, patience, as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. 7. Accept and do not reject anyone. Do not blow on a, re, on a flax to quench it. Do not break a very tiny bruised reed. Don't accept and don't reject. Warn those who are unruly. Comfort the faint-hearted. Please do not be the perfect player who is very frustrated with the weaker player. Wait, this weaker player eventually will know how to play. Give him easy game. Give her easy time until she trusts herself and she plays a little better. You both will enjoy the game. How good for you to keep scoring. How good for you to keep becoming the better player. You're playing tennis. At the end, one person wins, the other loses. But believe me, when it's win-win, it's lose-lose. Number seven, really, finally, I want to say, dare to play racket and not tennis. You want to have fun, not you want to win. How many wives out there are waiting and scoring when their husbands make a mistake? How many husbands are waiting to score better that their wives are fell and they are happier and proud that they are better than their wives? Two, you want to help your spouse to look good not for you to be strong. You want to help your husband to look good because he's feeling better rather than you score. Three, you want to make your spouse to get better at playing, not you showing you are better than him or her. How good is the score if you are really 
scoring and making the other person feeling better, feeling bad. How good is the score? What are you going to do with the score? Four, you want to keep the ball in the air rather than you smash it in the ground. Because when you keep it in the ball in the air, you're probably looking more at the heavens and hoping that both of you one day you will be both in heaven. Racket keeps the ball up. Tennis keeps the ball down. Racket helps you to grow with God. Tennis want to kill. You want to break a bruised reed. You want to enjoy life together, not to compete with each other. It's not a competition who scores and who wins and who is better. But it's a joyful, enjoyable time, game. I hope I didn't waste your time with this idea. But please think about it. What type of game you are playing at home? Are you playing to win? Are you playing to make the other lose? Are you both losing at the game? Are you both trying to teach each other how to play better? Are you lifting the other because you are the stronger mate player? Are you encouraging the other so you can play better? I hope you enjoyed this episode from Marriage on the Rock. Until we meet again, God bless.